Hey everybody, it's Joyce Luck from Black Hair Compass and I am back with a two month lock update. Um, if you guys missed my first, uh, my one month lock update, you might wanna check that out because much of what I reviewed today is gonna be piggybacking off of what I reviewed in that first uh, update. But anyways, um, I wanna send a shout out and thank you to all of the people that, all the ladies and gentlemen who volunteered to let me interview them. I really appreciate it. Um, I, the information that I got from you guys was really helpful. And again, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to talk with me, someone that you don't really know so again thank you so much um i just retightened my hair um and it took a whopping three days again and if you guys follow me on instagram you know that i was complaining about <laughs> my retightening process it took so very long i have never wanted to be on team palm roll more than during this interlocking retightening process like it took so freaking long guys which I expected but you know it just is another animal when you're actually doing it um I originally set out to be on a every four week regimen but I realized when I look back at the calendar I had gone six weeks without um uh, retightening so I think I'm going to use that as my new Standard. I'm gonna try to retighten every six weeks and just see how it goes. Cause ultimately, I want to get to retightening every 12 weeks if I can. If I mean, if it's gonna be detrimental to me, my hair is gonna be all jacked up. If I wait that long, I won't do that. But that's the ultimate goal every 12 weeks. So if I can get away with six weeks now, I'll probably just continue doing that. Um, but again, I mean, I think it took so long mainly because one, I have so many locks. That's the obvious thing. Two is I don't really have the muscle memory of interlocking down yet. Like I'm still learning it, so I'm not very quick with it. But I think the main culprit and the main thing that caused me to just take so long was the fact that I was having to address not only new growth, but a lot of slippage. Like I told you guys in my last video that I was experiencing a lot of slippage, but in some cases, like the slippage would be all the way from like the root to down here. Like that's a lot to interlock twice, you know what I mean? So I think that that's what was driving up my my re, my re retightening time. Hopefully, um, you know, as my locks mature, I won't have to deal with that as much. Um, so I'm thinking that it will start taking me less time, but we'll see. So I can start out with some of the positive changes that I've seen based on this retightening and over this past month is that I do not have as much matting like i said in my first video the matting was out of control like out of control and this time around i didn't have any matting like that's amazing because to me what that says is that you know my locks are starting to mature they're not mature yet but they're starting to and the locks are kind of like staying in their lane and not trying to like marry with the neighboring locks so that was good um, because that really did help me out. A negative thing that I noticed, it still relates to the matting, y'all. I told you, in my first month I had matting on 10, okay? I'm pretty sure that the reason for it was because I washed my hair and that soap, that Dr. Bronner soap makes my hair lock. So, but I didn't know that at the time. So I washed it and then like just went about my day. I, and at the end of the day, like several locks were like locked together, like four or five locks were attached at the roots and they were not coming apart. Like I tried to pull them apart. They were not coming apart. And I don't know why, but my mind told me to just like cut. So I started to cut and at the time it was fine. But when I came back to do my second retightening, I just saw how profound the damage was, man. I compromised the base of several of my locks. Like, I would have these fat, fat locks at the end dangling on real skinny bases. So I had to go back and combine. And that was real disappointing for me because, you know, I am, I'm a natural hair person, but I'm like really a healthy hair person. So I'm gonna see if I can show you. You're probably not really gonna be able to tell. But I had to combine a lot of locks 
at the base, like maybe like six or seven that I just destroyed with some scissors. Probably can't see it, let's see. Yeah, I mean, you can't even really see it, but trust me, they're there. I had to combine a lot. Some of them, most of them are two strand twisted. Like you see these ones that are fat on the ends and skinny at the roots. These are one of the ones that got combined. These got combined. Um, this one got combined. I just had to combine a lot because I really just got scissor happy. And I guess I didn't really get scissor happy. It's just I was cutting without being able to see, you know, what I was cutting and damaged a lot of my locks. Um, lesson learned though, it was really discouraging for me when I first figured out like what I had done. Because like I said, I'm about the health of, you know, your hair and now I'm about the health of these locks and I damaged them. So I was kind of disappointed about that. Long story short, I learned my lesson and even though it's like breaking the lock commandments, if I have matting like that again, I'm just gonna put conditioner on it and take it apart. Not the whole lock, but I mean like, take apart the base if the base is matted like that again i'm not gonna cut i'm just gonna take some detangling conditioner and just you know work them apart because i rather temporarily slow down the locking process and keep all of my hairs than you know keep my locks tight but then cut you know the base of them with some scissors so lesson learned lesson learned but um i was really discouraged when i saw that because I have been doing so much research and trying to do everything right. And everything that I have been trying to do right, I am doing right. But the things that I wasn't like keeping an eye out for, like scissors, like I didn't, you know, really spend a lot of time learning too much about that. That's what effed up my hair. So anyway, and some general updates are, I now have like three types of starter locks in my head. So we can start with this. Well, clearly you guys know I have interlocks. Like that's the majority of what you see are interlocks. And then here I have like these really two small braids. And originally those were just one lock, um, but it wouldn't stay locked. So I had to break it up and I braided it, hoping, hoping that it will stay in those and eventually lock over time. I think that the hair there is really soft and it's just gonna take a long time to lock. So I'm hoping that the braids will kind of help keep it in place. Um, obviously for the um, locks that I had to combine, those are now twist, but I had originally started out with some locks that were just twist to begin with. They weren't, um, you know, combined. I think this is one right here. And I just wanted to tell y'all, like it's very interesting to me because the ones that started out as twists are locking very slowly in comparison to the ones that are interlocks. Like you can see it's starting to lock down here, but at the base it's very much so a very organized twist. And that's just not the case for the ones that are straight interlocks. Like the ones that are straight interlocks are, are really taking off. Like they are locking way faster. So that's just something for me to keep in mind that, you know, my hair really does best with locking when it's interlocked as opposed to any of the other you know techniques that are available out there um and that's pretty much it i mean i'm just gonna try to like get a couple different views so you can see my hair um but that's pretty much it i mean you can see you know my i guess i call it my grid it's very much so intact um the like i said i had the problem area in the back where you know, I cut my own hair on accident. Lesson learned. But I think that by far, the area that's doing the best is the crown of my head. And honestly, if I could go back and do things differently, I would make all the locks on my head the size of the locks at my crown, because they're like the perfect size. They're like, in comparison to the rest of my hair, they're like medium. And these over here are like super small. Let me can show you. Right yeah, these bad boys are kind of small. Hopefully you can see that. They're just real small and th those were kind of like a pain in the neck to retighten. Just a pain, but the ones at the crown are like the perfect size. 
And if I could go back, I would probably make all of them that size. But yeah, that was pretty much it. I'll be back with a three month update. Hopefully things will still be going strong, going well. Um, but yeah, thanks, for guys, thanks guys for tuning in. Until next time, follow me on Instagram.